Hey there fellow creators, Ben here from Cinderblock Studios. And this week I wanted to talk about painting flesh tones and some easy methods for doing that. Now those of you that follow this channel probably know me for my landscapes. And you th might be thinking, wait a minute, Ben, you don't know anything about painting flesh tones or people. Why should I listen to anything you have to say? Well, you're half right, yeah, I don't paint figures. That doesn't mean I don't know color theory. And I would like to share with you my five tips for painting better and easy flesh tones, even though I don't really do it on a regular basis. Stick around. So while I don't currently do any kind of figure work in my painting, that doesn't necessarily mean I don't know how to make mix a flesh tone. There was a point in time, I think the most recent was a good decade ago, the last time I painted a figure, but that doesn't mean I don't know what I'm doing, at least in terms of color mixing. Uh, I'm fairly terrible with anatomy. I couldn't create a likeness to save my life, but I can mix flesh tones pretty well. And so let me share with you some of the things that I learned back when I learned how to mix flesh tones. The first and probably most important tip is to find a brownish yellow that you can use sort of as a base to mix from. Uh, for this has always been for me, uh, yellow ochre. Uh, it's in a lot of color theory sets and that's why it's in a lot of color theory sets because it is pretty much the ultimate starting point for flesh tones. Now if for whatever reason you can't find or get yellow ochre even though it's a very common and very cheap color, something like a Mars yellow or a yellow oxide also work really well and they get you in a very similar color space to this. But the one that most artists swear by is going to be something like a burnt, uh, or no, a raw sienna. Uh, had to look that up because I'm never sure. There's burnt and raw sienna and there's burnt and raw umber. Uh, those four colors, but specifically the, um, the raw sienna, are going to be very, very close to the yellow ochre. And all of those colors, whether you're pick, mixing one of those or, or, or all of them, a lot of, art, a lot of artists will kind of pick and choose like a, 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 an umber and a sienna. Uh, as sort of their bases, but that's sort of your starting point. Now from that starting point, it's important to mix some browns. You might well think, wait a minute, this is already kind of a brown, why do I have to mix some browns? Well, I would say start with your complements. Mix a red and a green brown, mix an orange and a blue brown, and then mix a yellow and purple brown, and lean all of them to the warmer side. Don't keep it straight one-to-one -one neutral. You want it to definitely lean on the warmer side because skin tones and flesh tones tend to be warmer. When you mix with your complements and specifically your primaries, you can then shift those colors a little bit in different directions. And that's all you really need to do. So mixing with the ochre, pull some of those, those browns in, start mixing those together, and you end up with a fairly complex range of skin tones. And then adding a little bit of white as needed to slowly bring that color up. Another thing people forget about is that there's a lot of underlying cooler tones in flesh as well. Specifically someone of my lighter complexion, you can definitely see the veins underneath my skin and based on the light penetrating and not penetrating your skin, my veins look blue. They're obviously not, but at a distance, those cooler colors should be then seen when you're also painting your figure. Now I'm not saying paint every vein in your character, that would be weird and creepy, but it's important to pull a little bit of those cool colors in, especially if you're doing an underpainting, and I highly recommend you should if you're doing any kind of figure work because skin is complicated and not just one color. Having some underlying cool colors will then make your flesh tones on top that are warmer stand out a lot more and be more complex and interesting. Somewhat, as I mentioned before, uh, it's important to lean a little more orange, so to speak, with your browns. So everything you mix should lean a little bit warmer. Uh, for this reason, I also recommend then also dabbing out your other primaries on your palette, at least to some degree. I usually just go with uh, blue and red myself. Uh, red for you know the underlying warmth of the skin, but, and then blue to mix in as needed to darken those colors back down. And the final big tip is to slowly add white. Uh, if you're painting someone like myself who is certainly melanin deprived, uh, you're going to be looking at more pinks, uh, but the, I think the idea 
that a lot of people get in their head is just like, oh, just make it light really, really quickly. No, no, no. Build that color up. Build dark first and slowly bring in the whites. That sounded weird. Hey, where are the white women at? And in addition to these five tips, I would say that it's important to really mix. Grab your brush, mix a little bit at a time. Do, you know, some of this color and some of that color. And a lot of times you're not necessarily mixing one big batch of a flesh tone. It's a lot of different little colors built up and built up and built up. And again, as mentioned before, with the darker undertones to the warmer tones, skin is complicated. Uh, there are three distinct layers of skin. Actually, if you talk to a dermatologist, they might tell you there's seven, but that's a whole other story and a whole other video. But it's not just slap a peachy color or slap a brown color on your, your figure. It's more complicated than that, than that. And if you mix and match with your browns a lot more, it's important to do that anyway for all types of painting. But in order to do it for flesh tones, it really gives you a more complex and interesting look and a more dynamic piece as a result. So if I were to roll all of these tips into one, it would be yellow ochre plus your primaries mixing to get browns. If you're doing figure work or just starting to get into figure work, a basic color theory set or a portrait or figure set that includes something like an ochre or a sienna is going to be your best friend. It's not complicated. Mix your browns, take them from there. So that is just sort of a quick look at my tips and techniques for making flesh tones. Unlike my other videos, I probably won't be going into any further depth on this one in the future just because I don't, I'm not a portrait painter, I don't really do it. Um, but I do think these techniques can definitely be applied, especially if you're struggling to get a rich, complex uh, flesh tone or just struggling to get those colors to be exactly right. I, I, I think the, the idea of the ochre plus the browns and then slowly adding white uh, are really going to allow you guys to create uh, much more interesting and dynamic pieces as a result. Again, obviously I am not a portrait painter. Uh, if you are looking for someone to do a deep dive with, I highly recommend uh, Andrew Titchler's channel here on YouTube. Uh, I've seen a few of his videos. I don't watch them regularly because, again, I'm not a portrait painter. But he has some incredible advice. He is an oil painter, but I honestly feel a lot of that color advice, especially any type of painting, can definitely translate between mediums. So definitely check his stuff out. As always, if you enjoy this video or learn something or just like hearing me talk about art supplies and mixing paint, go ahead and hit that like button. Get subscribed if you're not already. Let me know your thoughts and comments below, especially if you are more regularly a portrait painter. If there's anything I missed, anything you think their community should know about, share that down below. Uh, check me out in links in the description box below, including in the community discord, uh, my own website for my art. To be a, being able to sign up for the newsletter is over there. And thanks guys for watching. Keep on creating and I will see you guys next time.